What's up you guys, this is Christian for Hustle & Bustle. Please watch the video and stop the Netflix because this is the fourth time I'm recording these videos and the camera keeps cutting out and it's a little bit annoying but not as annoying as your ex-girlfriend. So in this video we're gonna learn about wholesaling and a little bit more about how and what this wholesaling thing is. Before we continue who am I? Again, if you didn't see in the last video, I'm 34 year old hustler and bustler and grinder. Uh, I own buy and hold properties. I do uh, hard money lending and I have three, three side businesses and I have a W2 job. I also would like to retire by the beginning of next year. So we'll see if I'm going to reach that goal. If you want to stick around and see how that journey goes, please click the subscribe and like button, leave a comment below and enjoy the show. Now let's dive into the wholesaling. Now, since I've recorded that video three times already, I uh, kind of know a lot more about wholesaling by now. So there's like four steps mainly that you need to take. You need to find distressed property, uh, put it under contract, then assign that contract to a buyer. And actually that's not really a step. The fourth step is, uh, you know, collect your fee. It's not really a step, but uh, I guess it. you can look at it as a step. All right, so how much is that fee let me just check if the camera is recording because last time I recorded the whole video and that camera was not recording. It's not fun. It's not fun, guys. It's not. So the fee from what I read online is between 5 and 10% of the deal, which I have never really heard. But just because I haven't heard of something doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Now, uh, long are gone the days that the referral fee or the finder's fee actually was $5,000. Nowadays, wholesalers make at least 10K sometimes even more 15 to 20 and if you compare that to actually fixing and flipping the property where you put all your hard-earned money to obtain the property then you put another chunk of money for renovation then three to six months of renovating the property then holding cost and so on and so forth and all of that if you find a good deal to fix and flip you're gonna make 30 to 40k and now the wholesaler just makes 20 it might seem a little unfair but at the end of the day what is fair you know, as I always like to say, uh, you don't get what you deserve in life. You only get what you negotiate for. So if the wholesaler negotiates a great deal and they make 40 grand out of the deal and you can only make 40 grand out of the flip. I mean, there is no point of you being mad. Maybe they got the deal on a very good price. And now we're going to see how we're going to get a good price and what offer to make when we actually get a deal. But before we do that, let's see the best deals. Now, best deals are distressed properties. Now, best deals are the distressed properties, as we spoke into my previous video uh, that I'm going to link somewhere here, I think, or here, one of those two sites. Uh, I believe it's here on this site. Uh, there's a little card there. You can click on it and it's going to open the videos. I'm going to leave the description. I'm not going to leave the description. I'm going to leave the link. I'm going to leave the link down below as well in the description so you can click there and watch it. So um, general distressed properties are priced below market value and the owners want to sell for whatever reason uh, usually those properties need quite of a repair uh, there's two examples here we can we can look at uh, paint and carpet which is usually referred to as paint and carpet reno which is usually this paint and carpet uh, cost you like three to seven grand depend how much you want to go uh, with the paint carpet maybe a little bit gardening to make it look nice and then on the other side of the uh, spectrum is 50 to 60 thousand dollars fully good at out property which is gonna you know require more time maybe three months maybe six months maybe eight months sometimes maybe a year you never know because sometimes things come out that you did not expect but all you need to do is go and speak to motivated sellers uh, people who are usually facing foreclosure absentee owners probate and properties with liens and we're going to speak a lot about what all those things are in another video because I want to I try to make the videos under 10 minutes and there is a lot to talk about real estate. I can actually talk about real estate until tomorrow morning, pretty much. Now, a few ways I find those properties. I use three main ways. There's more, but I drive for dollars, which means that, you know, you drive around and look for houses with blue tarp on the on the roof which is perfect, mm, my favorite. Uh, you look for leaky faucets, you look for overgrown grass, you look like if the property looks like shit, that's your property. <laughs> then we got bandit signs that you can put, you know, we buy houses, we buy houses cash, any condition, or any other type of advertisement you can do online. Now check if the bandit signs are legal in your area, don't do anything illegal. 
or if you're a citizen and you don't face the fear of getting deported, do whatever you want. And the third uh, one is mailer campaigns. Uh, it's easy to do mailer campaigns once you know what properties to mail to. And I like to use Deal Machine. I'm going to leave a link down below into Deal Machine. I'm not sure if there's a referral ring link to that, so I'm not making any money out of it. But um, the good uh, uh, plan is $100 that actually tells you you can divide that by two people. You can have two drivers for $100 or $50 each, and it tells you which streets you drove by already. And uh, you can click on the property while you're driving, and it's going to tell you if it's an absentee owner, if it's a company owned, or if it's uh, owner occupied. So absentee owners is something that you want to look into. Maybe if it's company owned, maybe they want to sell. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, uh, make your decision, make your strategy and use some mailers, which means that you're sending mails, uh, letters, not mails, letters to them, to the owners. And you say something like, hey, so-and-so owner, um, you know, Christian, and I want to buy your property. Now, when you find your subject property, make an offer. How can you decide what offer to make? This isn't really one offer you can make or there isn't just one type of way you can structure an offer at the end of the day you are into the business of solving people's problems if they want quick closing maybe you're going to be like hey you know i can close quickly but i need to come down on the price a little bit i cannot pay 130 for this i can pay 115 and now we can advertise this discounted price to a buyer cash buyer who has to close quickly or just look and see what's important to the sellers and try to accommodate them now before we continue i want to stress that out here that check if you need license to do that type of deals for example in florida you do not need any license for wholesaling but in other states i've heard that you need a real estate license or some other type of license to do to facilitate that type of deals so when you make the deal you need to make sure that the seller is happy because you're buying it here. The buyer is happy because you're selling the property here and you have some fee in the middle. So you have to make every party, I mean, each party happy and basically everybody should eat. The price is formed uh, very easy. Uh, what is a cash buyer willing to pay for a property? Oops, sorry, minus your fee, minus renovation cost. That's gonna be equal to what is your MAO or maximum allowable offer to the seller. Now, when it comes to presenting the offer to the buyer, uh, a lot of buyers want a discount on the, um, the ARV, which is after repair value. That discount depends on various factors, renovation cost, is it gonna be quick and easy or is it gonna be long and hard, long and hard. <laughs> I'm talking about project difficulty and turnaround time. If it's a project that is painting carpet and it's gonna last two, three weeks, that's a quick one, you know, less profit, but a quick one. Or if it's gonna be a fully getting out the property and it's gonna last six, seven, eight months, that's a, a difficult job. So you might wanna consider giving more discount on the sale price on, on that one compared to the, the first example with a quick, uh, you know, carpet and paint uh, job. You have to learn what buyers will pay in your market. So most people who are not real estate savvy and they have some other job like a lawyer, a doctor, whatever else they do, their main thing is not real estate. So to them, you can appeal with maybe 10% discount of the ARV. For example, if the property's uh, ARV is 200,000, and again, do a good ARV. Don't do any schmuck not good business don't present stupid numbers to the investors because as you can tell they're pissing me off um same with the renovation costs don't come up with some stupid renovation cost so on a two hundred thousand dollar property multiply that by 90 and you're going to basically give them 10 percent discount which will be uh 180 000. now minus your fee uh, ten thousand dollars let's say you want to make and minus the renovation cost let's say ten thousand dollars just for simplicity this is really not a accurate number but just for simplicity so your mao is a hundred and sixty thousand dollars that you can offer to the seller to sell the property now most flippers they want 20 percent discount so in this case you're going to multiply 200k times 80 and you're going to get a hundred and sixty thousand dollars minus ten thousand dollar your fee minus ten thousand dollar repairs Again, just an example, you're looking at MAO of $140,000. Obviously, the less price you sign the contract on, the more fee you will make or faster you're going to sell the deal. If you make the same fee, but sell it to a lower price. 
if you don't know what prices cash buyers will pay, it is very kind of complicated to find that out. Hey, Mr. Cash Buyer. So I want to present you quality deals, but would you tell me more about your buying criteria? Like what deals should I look what deals should I be looking at to present to you? Well, that was hard. Or you can always ask uh, the wholesalers that you meet on like real estate meetings and ask them what is their cash buyers criteria? What formula do they go with? And you know, kind of adjust accordingly. And just to mention during the recession of 2008, uh, as far as I read, a lot of people used to give uh, used to use the 65% rule. So if it's a $200,000 property, they multiply that by 65% instead of 80 or 90. Or in other words, they give the buyer 35% discount because it was riskier at that time. So with more risk, you want more cushion, like the investors would like more cushion into the deal. All right, next time we're going to talk a little bit more about ABC closing or double closing, how it's also known as a daisy chain, assignment closing, how to find what the repair cost is, uh, we talked already about driving dollars, but you, we, we can uh, touch on tax liens and tax deeds and more things coming up for the wholesaling and real estate overall. But I want to stress this enough. When you do any type of business, it doesn't need to be wholesaling. Have integrity and give the investors good numbers. Because next time uh, you go to that investor, the difference if they're going to take you seriously or not is what numbers did you give them? Like, did you give them bullshit numbers the first time? or no. With all that said, thank you very much for watching guys. Keep hustling and hit the subscribe and like button as usual. Thank you very much for the support. See you next time guys.